know I can be a little awkward, so bear with me. Um, so first off, I wanted to say thanks for coming out today, and then I hope you all have had a fun afternoon being here, and I want to thank Big Buddy for having us um, and hosting this event for me. Um, so the questions that I get asked about why I wrote a book and that kind of thing, well, this started when I was a child. I wanted to write. And all through high school, I kept notebooks like this handy at all times. So I was writing any idea that came to my head. And I was explaining earlier that I got to find those notebooks because those were the days when you had no cynicism and you weren't jaded and creativity was abundant because everything was new and possible, right? So um, when I get ready to write my young adult or my new adult novels that I can share with younger readers, um, that's where I'm going to dig for that information. So this has been a lifelong dream for me to actually sit down and finish it. Um, you know, having kids and being a responsible adult and paying bills, you don't get a chance to do that very often. So last year, a friend of mine challenged us to do National Novel Writing Month, which is, if you don't know, you attempt to write a novel in the month of November, and you have daily word counts that you try to hit, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be well thought out. You just get the words down, and you can fix it later. So. My first attempt at NaNoWriMo, I finished. And that's what you have in your hands. Um, a much more polished, edited version of it, but that's what it is. Um, so when I got ready to write my book, uh, I wanted it to be something that would touch people and that would elicit an emotional response. So I started to ask myself questions. And the first question was, what's the worst possible thing that could happen to me that I'm not sure that I could live through? Um, and when I answered that question, I said, now, where's the plot twist? What could make this even worse? Insult to injury. And after I answered that question, where do we go from here? So how do you survive that? How do you go on living the worst possible thing that could happen to you? So, and that's where the book came from. Um, I finished NaNoWriMo, and then I set it aside. And I didn't do anything with it because there's always that voice in your head that says, nobody's going to like it. Nobody's going to read it. It's not any good. Um, you should have never tried this to begin with. It's a failure, right? At least that's what happens in my brain. So Angel and I decided to go to Nashville to a conference called UtopiaCon, and the main motivators was we wanted to meet Sylvia Day, who writes the Crossfire series, and we wanted to meet Amy Bartol, who writes the Premonition series, which is a young adult story about angels and things like that. So. We accomplished that mission, but what we didn't expect was the panels of authors just like me that are introverted and that struggle with that voice in their head to say, it's no good, nobody's going to read it. And they just really lifted us up and gave me the motivation to say, you know what, I'm going to edit this, and I don't care if I ever get an agent, I don't care if I ever get a publisher, I can do this for myself. And that's what I did. Um, so I'm thankful that we went to that conference, and I'm thankful that found my tribe of people that fit into the category that I fit into where I'm introverted and I'm down on myself all the time. Um, but also that well, there are people who have overcome that and they've helped me overcome that. Um, there's so many people to thank along the way. This uh, kid over here and Angel and Amy Fortenberry who is also an author and uh, does NaNoWriMo and she's just been a really um, a big encourager and she helped read the early versions as did Mindy who was a beta reader. So there's so many people to thank that I'll forget everybody but um, anyway. So now um, I haven't changed careers necessarily. I still get up and go to AutoZone every day which I've done for the last 15 years. Um, but I can see that one day with hard work and like I tell the kids do something every day towards your dream then maybe I can make that shift eventually. Maybe when I retire from AutoZone, this will be my supplemental income. We'll see. All right. So with that, I hadn't even considered doing a reading. I just thought people would show up and get me to sign their books, and we'd talk a minute, hug some necks, and we'd be done. But I've received a lot of encouragement on Facebook about, we want you to read. So we're going to try to read. Okay. And I've got two pieces um, from the book. And what I'll do is I'll do the first one, and then we'll do the giveaways, and then I'll read the second one for those that want to stay. Okay? So nobody make fun of me if I'm not slow. Oh. 
I roll my eyes to myself and he can't see them anyway. Not that I think you are, I just don't know, so I'm pretty sure I'm messing up by telling you so much about me. He laughs again a little harder and it is a great laugh. No, I understand, you really don't have a reason to talk to me. I just saw a young woman running down a country road by herself at night and thought I should be chivalrous and see if she needs help. I can see that you don't. You seem pretty tough. Would you like a drink of water? You must be thirsty running in this heat. I start to go near him and then stop myself. What am I doing? Hello, serial killer. That's probably not a, uh, you're right, serial killer, he indicates himself. How about you come into the yard and wait here? I'll go get you a glass. I'll try to remember to leave out the date rape drugs so you know I'm not a rapist too. 